Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation of our contribution for the 14th Modelica conference in 2021 with the title Neural FMU towards structural integration of FMUs into neural networks. My name is Tobias Sumara and the work behind this contribution was done at the chair of mechatronics at Augsburg University, held by Lars Mikkelsons, which is also author of this contribution. I will start by giving a very short introduction on neural ODEs, their extension to neural FMUs and the use tools and standards of this contribution. Then I will introduce you to the libraries fmi.jl and fmiplux.jl, the core of our work here, followed by two small coding examples. The first one is on how to simulate a FMU and the second one on how to set up and train a neural FMU. I will close the presentation conventionally with a short conclusion and a view on future work. So let's get started. Physical systems can often be described as ODEs, even if we got PDEs, um, they are often discretized to ODEs. Solving an ODE requires a numerical ODE solver, which numerically integrates the physical system dynamics. In the topic of learning dynamic system behavior, one of the big steps forward was the introduction of neural ODEs. The idea behind can be explained very easy. Why do something with a neural network if there's an algorithm which is much better at this task? The task I'm talking about is numerical integration. So instead of setting up a recurrent neural network that can learn a simple numerical integrator like the explicit Euler method, I use the neural network only to learn system dynamics, so the system state derivatives basically, and use a state-of-the-art numerical solver for a numerical integration. This step led to many advantages. Um, we are often faster and use less memory because we can use modern techniques like order and step size adaption during the integration, plus we can simply change the numerical solver if it doesn't fit our requ requirements according uh, accuracy or performance anymore and use any other numerical solver. So the core question behind our contribution was, how can we use this beautiful concept for hybrid modeling in real applications, meaning with models from common modeling tools? Modeling in industry is done in modeling tools, and there's currently no modeling tool, at least I don't know one, which offers the possibility to freely build and train advanced hybrid models. So we need to export our model from the modeling environment to a machine learning environment. For hybrid model machine learning, we suggest the use of the Julia programming language, which offers many advantages, like it's very fast, the developers, often speak of C fast, so there are benchmarks of use cases where Julia code runs almost as fast as native C implementations, and it's platform independent. There are many impressive libraries like for machine learning, automatic differentiation, and solving of differential equations, which makes it an ideal starting point for our aim. For the transfer process of our model from modeling to machine learning tool, we also need a model exchange format that is supported by many modeling tools. Therefore, we picked the most common one, FMI. The problem on the other side was that although there were some efforts for Julia FMU importer, there was no ready to use solution. So this is basically where the story begins. So we start again by having a look on the neural ODE topology and extend it by a model exchange FMU. Further, we can extend the hybrid model by another neural network if we wish so. As you can see, the first neural network operates on system states and the second neural network is able to manipulate system state derivatives, meaning the system dynamics. As a side note, even if we consider the model exchange FMU as part of the neural FMU here, it is also possible to build neural FMU setups with co-simulation FMUs. But for many use cases, it is far more interesting to use model exchange FMUs because doing so, we can manipulate the system dynamics before the numerical integration. This is not possible for co-simulation FMUs because the numerical solver is already part of the FMU and there's no interface to play with the system dynamics before the integration. The technical challenge here is not to build the hybrid model 
or evaluate it, but to train it. In general, we need the sensitivities of our loss function according to our net parameters. As an example of our figure, if our loss is defined, for example, as mean squared error between neural FMU states and target states from a data source, we need to differentiate through the entire model. So the technical challenge was to provide parameter sensitivities for this construct by chaining derivatives determined by different methods together. A much more detailed view on this is part of the printed contribution. So let's have a look on the libraries. We started by implementing a library to import FMUs into the Julia programming language called fmi.jl. fmi.jl allows for loading, instantiating, parameterizing, simulation, and plotting of FMUs. We can simulate co-simulation as well as model exchange FMUs, and we support simulation of discontinuous model exchange FMUs too. Today, only the most common FMI version, FMI2, is supported in the current release, but um, we are working on FMI3 too. For easily building neural FMUs, we provide the library extension fmiflux.jl. With fmiflux.jl, it is possible to set up and train neural FMUs as easy as common neural networks. Basically, FMUs can be used like a neural network layer here. Both libraries are open source and available in GitHub. You can find the links in the bottom left corners on this slide. Well, this was a very fast introduction to a library, so let's have a look on how this works in practice with a short code example. So I want to start by showing a little code snippet using fmi.jl that shows how easy it is to load and simulate a FMU if only simulation results are needed. Please note that it is also possible to use the commands from the FMI specification like FMI to setup experiment or FMI to enter initialization mode and so on if you need more control over what happens in the background. So we start by loading in the library fmi.jl and defining a path to our FMU. Loading the FMU is as easy as calling FMI load with our path to FMU. The next step is to generate an, instances, an instance of our FMU. Multiple instances are possible, of course, if needed. To simulate the FMU, we just need to call FMI simulate. The FMU type, model exchange, or co-simulation is detected in the background. If the FMU supports both, you can force simulation, for example, as model exchange FMU by typing FMI simulate ME. 0 and 10 are our time boundaries for the simulation, and with the optional argument record values, we can inform which variables we want to be locked during simulation. <clears throat> you don't need to use variable identifiers like in a model description, but you can if you wish. If you pass strings, like in this case, the correct identifi uh, identifiers are searched automatically. Now we can plot our recorded values by FMI plot. And as you can see, the FMU in this example is a frictionless spring mass pendulum with a displacement 40 zero. So it will oscillate forever with a fixed frequency and amplitude. Finally, we unload the FMU to clean up memory, and that's it. The second thing I want to show is the setup um, of a neural FMU with fmiflux.jl. We start again by loading libraries. Um, the first thing is Flux, the default library for machine learning with neural networks in Julia. The second is fmiflux.jl, our library extension that makes FMUs flux compatible. And from the differential equations library, we pick our numerical solver, our numerical ODE solver, in this case, ZIT5. We load our FMU and instantiate it. We check how many states we got in our FMU to build up a neural network with a fitting interface. Um, we've got two states in this case. 
And now, as in almost any other machine learning framework, we build a neural network out of different layers. But at layer number two, we use our model exchange FMU, just like a common network layer with inputs, in our case, the FMU states and outputs, in our case, the FMU state derivatives. And after the FMU, we got three additional dense layers. And that's it. Um, we are almost done. We construct a neural FMU problem by passing our FMU, our network topology, start and stop time, uh, 0 and 10 in this case, our numerical ODE solver, ZIP5, and via the optional argument save at some checkpoints where we want our simulation output to be captured. If we want to check our neural FMU output, we just call our neural FMU problem with the start state x0 and plot it again with FMI plot. Doesn't really look like a pendulum, but we didn't have trained it yet. In fact, our network layers are initialized with random values. Finally, um, the training is as easy as calling flux dot train with a custom loss function I defined off screen. The neural FMU problem net parameters retrieved by flux dot params. An iterator with 30 repeats, an optimizer, we picked Adam in this case, and a custom callback function for the logging of the training progress I defined off screen too. And as you can see, the loss slowly decreases. At this point, we will speed up training and have a look at the results. So originally, our neural FMU performed really bad because it was random initialized. But as you can see, after short training, it's doing a much better job. Um, training has not converged at this point, And we could further improve the fit by using, for example, larger network topologies. We are almost done, so let me conclude the past minutes and highlight where we are planning to go in the near future. To conclude, we presented neural FMUs as the structural combination of one, or even more than one, a typical neural network, a numerical ODE solver, and a FMU. This setup allows for very efficient learning of dynamic systems because only the part of the model needs to be learned that isn't already part of the FMU first principle model. As for neural ODEs, numerical integration is performed by an ODE solver and not by a recurrent neural network or similar. And to bring this concept from theory to life, we provide the two open source libraries fmi.jl to import FMUs into a Julia programming language and fmiflux.jl to build and train neural FMUs. Future work on the libraries include the support for FMI3 and SSP. FMI prospects are currently under testing. For fmiflux.jl, we need to do some performance optimizations to reduce training time on large systems. Um, this can, for example, be achieved by implementing colored Jacobians to retrieve independent Jacobian entries at the same step. Further, Many real physical systems run into stable equi equilibriums if not disturbed. Um, this natural stability is violated as soon as we add a neural network that manipulates system dynamics. Even if there were no problems for the paper example, very sensitive systems may become instable if the neural network is not initialized right or become instable during training itself. A monitored and controlled training process is therefore needed in the future and is one of our active research topics. Finally, the construction of neural SSPs will be interesting too in the future. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. I'll gladly answer any of your questions at the conference communication platform or outside the conference via email. You can find my contact details at the bottom of the slide. Last but not least, we would like to thank our paper reviewers for the very constructive and helpful feedback, as well as Andreas Heuermann for his nice hints, and Florian Schleffer for designing the library logos. Thanks for your attendance and attention.